<laughs> All right, everyone say hi. All right, let's get started. Again, so today, 5.5, taking another look at parallel and perpendicular lines. Does someone worry about the battery for now? Uh, 5.5. So yesterday, what did we do? We went through a little exercise with uh, geometry sketch pad. And morning. Uh, okay, so yesterday we did a little activity in genre sketch pad and we explored a little bit on parallel lines and some of the properties regarding perpendicular lines. Before we get into that, let's talk about, let's take a step back for a second here and talk about some real life stuff for a bit. We're talking a lot about you know, slopes, X and Y again, and uh, you know some scenarios about like how many tickets uh, and then visiting rides and things like that in the, in the homework. But let's take a step back for a second and really think about where some of this slope stuff that we've been talking about the last week and a half or so. All right, so. How many of you have a part time job? One, two, three? Three people? Okay. All right. So, Chris, what do you do in your uh, spare time when you're outside of school? What do you do? Play sports? In terms of working, where do you, you said you like to get? What's that? Work with your dad? Okay, that's good. And who else? Daniel? Yep. Lifeguard. Oh, nice. At a community center or? Like at a pool. <laughs> yeah. Always looking up for non pool lifeguards. <laughs> but, uh, okay, so we have a couple people here who have a part time job. You know, I think in grade nine and sort of you're still finding your way through high school, so it's tough to sort of um, find time to work. But soon enough, you guys will, will, will be getting into that, probably in grade 10 or grade 11. Uh, you know, look for some of that uh, extra cash. Let's talk about when you do get there for a bit. Minimum wage in Ontario is right about here, right? 8.75 an hour. So here I have um, dollars, how much money you can make, and the hours at work, right here. So 8.75 an hour, that's what we get here. So when I'm zoomed in like this, it's pretty steep slope, right? So we have to work about an hour here. You make 875 there. Let's uh, do a little bit more. So 875 an hour. That seems like a lot. Little. Little? Right. It's a start. Okay. It'll, get you, it'll get you started at least. Uh, we scroll up for a second here. What exactly does 875 get? Anyone here have an iPod or an iPhone? iPod, iPhones? Richard? iPod or iPhone? Touch! Not nice. And if you want an iPod or a couple people here looking out for one. All right. Let's see where that lies at our scale over here. Oh, I'm going to have to zoom up a little bit more. Let's 
is uh, that's used the most here. Just obviously, my finger's not that accurate. All right, so let's let's take a look at uh, what eight seventy five an hour gets you. So, moving the lemon sweater, right? It's about ninety eight dollars, just below the hundred dollar mark. There, I scroll down a little bit. If you're working away at minimum wage, that gets you about. Let's see where we go. Right there on the first line there. It's right about there. So just uh, shy of, uh, or just over 10 hours to get that sweater. 100 bucks for a Lululemon sweater, about 10 hours uh, and, a, and a bit to, uh, to get that. Mine here is still looking pretty steep. I'll get to this little, uh, this very gently rising line in a, in a little bit. So let's see uh, what else 875 and I can get us. Oh, there's an iPhone up there. Sorry. So iPhone 3G starts on about $199, about $100. And. So if you look at this point right here, let's see if we can get some coordinates for that. So you're working away, let's say, you know, I don't know, the movie theater or something like that. Two hours, it looks like. It worked about 22 hours, so if you're thinking, if you're working full time hours in a week, full time is usually about 40 hours, so you're going to have to work about half of that in order to afford an iPhone. Okay. If you. Well, that's 22 hours altogether. Oh. So, however many shifts that'll, if you know, if you work three-hour shifts, four-hour shifts, you know, it's we're looking at 22 hours altogether. You'll need to uh, uh, work away in order to get that iPhone, and and about half of that to uh, get that sweater. Now, if you take a look at, if we can scroll down a little bit more. If we take a look at the average salary per hour, it's not too far off from the minimum, okay, which is about 11.42 an hour, average salary per hour in Canada. So that's considering like everyone that's working, we're right about there. So, uh, so it's not too bad if you're when you're starting out, you're not too far off from what the average person is making in the country. Let's let's think about the uh, the big dollars for a little bit. If you look at our uh, our two lines here, one for the minimum wage and one for the average salary per hour, you know we're looking at something that's well. That's pretty steep, right? And so is 11.42 an hour. 
little bit steeper. A little bit steeper slope up there. Anyone here thinking of becoming a doctor? Any doctors in the house? Oh, there you go. Yeah. All right. So, if you're thinking about being a doctor, Mina, how do you think that slope will look like on this graph? What's that? Steeper. A lot steeper? Let's take a look. This faint line right here, you can see my y-axis right here, and this faint line next to it, I think that's our doctor line. Let me zoom out a little, or yeah, zoom out. Doctor, where are you? So there's 20, 30. Oh, there we go. There's my doctor. So, average doctor in Canada makes about $97 an hour. That turns out to be about 200 and I looked it up this morning, $202,000 in a year. So if you look at our doctor point right over here, $97 in, in one hour. So if you look at that, that's one hour right there. You can get that Luke and Dummy sweater, you know, before lunch. Probably. Maybe when you step into the operating room, you 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 know, you've earned that new lemon sweater. You put your coat on, the sweater is yours. You, you know, buy your first coffee break, that iPhone is yours. Look at that. Your doctor. No. Not bad. You guys want to go really steep? Uh, who can tell me who's the highest paid athlete? Tiger? Tiger Clips? Any other? Uh... Tiger Woods, what did I say? A-Rod, he's pretty up there. I think he's the top five for sure. Beckham? Beckham from top five? I think the top five goes something like Tiger, Beckham, uh, Phil Mickelson, you guys know him? Well, the golfer. He makes a lot of money too. And I think somewhere in there is like Shaq and LeBron and Kevin Garnett. Tiger Woods, we're talking about steepness of a slope. Okay. You're working one hour. We've seen, minimum wage, we've seen the average person in Canada, we've seen a doctor in Canada. In order for me to get Tiger Woods on this graph right here, how far do you think I'll have to zoom out? Pretty far? What do you think that line will look like? So much that it goes this way. Almost perfectly straight up. All right, let's see what we get here. I'm going to try and zoom out as much as possible. Can I go anymore? Maybe not. Okay. Keep going up. And up. And up. I think this is my doctor line right here. Keep going up. Oh, there you are. Tiger Woods, $138,000 an hour. What do you think that equation looks like? Linda. Pretty much. 100, 138, y equals 138,000x. X being the number of hours, and that x is almost nothing. In 
order to get that uh, this vertical line right here. Yeah, that's one hour, and we've seen that. That's my doctor right here. So that's how steep the slope is on Tiger Woods earning $138,000 an hour versus my my doctor, who makes a, a fair chunk. Tiger Woods makes what a doctor makes in a year in in two hours or less, 90 minutes probably. Not bad. Let's get a little perspective in this whole thing. And it's sort of, we can look at those numbers. Okay, Tiger Woods pretty makes a lot of money. So we obviously don't make <laughs> anywhere near that. He breathes and like money falls out of the center. Right here, okay. Let's get a little perspective in this whole thing. CEO of Disney, I think this number's this number came probably around the late nineties. Makes about nine thousand seven hundred uh, and eighty-three dollars an hour. Okay. Remember that line that I had at the bottom over here? This one right here? <laughs> Well, right now, my minimum wage is right here. Right there. Look at this line right here. Not a lot. What was that? I heard something over here. Wet shops? Interesting. All right. Disney CEO makes about nine thousand dollars an hour. Somebody in Haiti making those Disney T-shirts, twenty cents an hour. Twenty cents an hour. If I, and those t those t-shirts, they, you know, they sell at Walmart, Walmart for about $10. Do the math for me for a second. If this person's making the t-shirt, how, how many hours would they have to work in order to buy the t-shirts that they're actually making? <laughs> Lyndon, 50 hours. That's a good question. But if they wanted to work and buy, buy, you know, make an honest living and buy a T-shirt for, you know, their their son or their daughter, fifty hours that they would have to put in. That's more than, you know, more than we. Well, most people put in in a week to get that t-shirt. See so how many hours they actually work in one week? 70. So they make that much and put in almost double the amount of hours okay, that the normal person would do in Canada, in, in, a, in the developed world. So when you think about slopes and, you know, when we're thinking about lines, it's important to see how, again, they can give us a sense of perspective. 50 hours for a t-shirt. We make 875 an hour of t-shirts ours in just, just over an hour. Something to think about. When you're going out and looking for that part-time job 
and you know some interesting places that you can work. Movie theater. I worked in movie theater in, in high school, all through high school. I think if there was a job that I would do that I could do for the rest of my life and be happy with it, movie theater, somebody working on movie theater would have to be up right up there. Great movies, anytime. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Just walk in and you know. Or you know, you're born one summer day, you walk in, watch a movie. What's that? Oh yeah. It's one of the perks. So that's a nice job, nice perks. But again, looking at this. Let's keep in mind, you know, let's, let's take a little perspective in what we do and what other people are doing out there to, to get by. All right, what I want you to do now is everybody go to the website. And what I want you to do is you scroll down a little bit on today's posting. There are a bunch of these little gadgets. Right there. There's one. There's, I think there's about five of them. five gadgets, and it's just a little poll that I'm doing just to see where we stand on you know, how well we understood yesterday's lesson or what we, what we took from yesterday. So what I want you to do is, on your own, okay, you don't need to discuss this with the person next to you, just uh, do this on your own. Go through each one of these gadgets, just about five of them, and what I've done is I've posted two slopes. And I want you to tell me whether or not, based on those two slopes, if the two lines would be parallel, they'd be perpendicular, or neither. Okay, so let's take uh, let's take about three minutes to do that, and we'll see how we do. So just to uh, summarize from yesterday, we finished off this way. So perpendicular lines, two lines that intersect at 90 degrees. And the slopes are perpendicular lines. Oh, per perpendicular lines are negative reciprocals. And key things to note when you're thinking about negative reciprocals is that the products of those two numbers, okay, give you negative one. And you would have seen that yesterday in the activity that we were doing in Geometry Sketchpad, uh, when it when it calculated the slope for you for perpendicular line, uh, that it was indeed negative one. Greg. Yes. So if you see this point right here, it's the, the reciprocal would be the opposite side. Okay, so that's a really good question. Because if you right now we were thinking negative reciprocals both times, but um, if you have a negative slope to begin with, the reciprocal of that is going to be, or negative reciprocal, is going to be the opposite side. So that's a really good question. Is it still the same slope? So the question again is if I have a slope of one half and another another slope of six over twelve, is that still the same slope? 
So, if we were to look at that on a graph, because we're considering the rise of a run, so in your case, uh, you're saying that we go up one and over two, okay. that still applies. If we go up six and across 12, okay, if we break that down against the line, that still ends up being 1 over 2 anyways. So it is, you're right, it is a 6. Okay, and of course, uh, it's not just the opposite sign, but our denominator and our numerator are switched as well. You guys okay over here? this out yesterday on properties. Yeah. All right, so this is where we left off in terms of an, ex of an example yesterday. We have one line here, x minus 2y equals 4, and we want to know, well, are these lines parallel or perpendicular to my line that I'm given here. What do I need to do? Okay, so we need to get our equation, which is in standard form. I want to get that to slope intercept form. So once we have our slope, that tells us whether or not it's parallel or perpendicular. So, uh, someone tell me, who can tell me, what's the uh, slope intercept form of this equation right now? We did this last chapter, so. You can do that on paper right now. Are we with that? Are we the what? Richard? Right? Y equals negative 2. Okay, so here we go. Correct. Now that I have my slope here, where's my slope actually? 
down if you need to or work it on on paper if you need to. Oh, oh that's just a comma. None? Okay. Uh, Chris says that it's, it's either parallel or perpendicular. But why do you say so? this is not, that is not negative one, right, it's 
not perpendicular. Uh, they're not, one line is not perpendicular to the other. I hope you guys don't mind this little arrow that's dragging around here because when you go back and you watch the video later, I'll be pointing around and you'll be listening to it and you'll be like, what's he, what is he talking about? What's he pointing at? And I'll be doing this. And you can't see that with video. So that's why I have this. What's that? Yeah, yeah, it's recorded on the screen. I didn't want to get an actual long shot of me. All right, let's uh, let's take a look at another example here. It's a little trickier. Okay. Let's look at this for a second. Given our little graph over here. Which line segments in this diagram okay, are perpendicular? I'll let you guys take a look at that for a second. Which line segments in this diagram are perpendicular? by just looking at this, which, which line segments are perpendicular and which ones are not. Chris. Okay, so you're saying that visually, Q and P Q and P are perpendicular to my M and N line. So it looks, it sure looks like that, just looking at the graph. And, okay, now what can you say about A and B and M and N? Parallel? So these two lines, A and B and M and N, A and B, are they parallel or can you tell from here? Maybe, maybe not. How can we check that? Do they look like it's a good one? I don't know if I'll if you write that on the test. It'll be tough to express. But I see what you're saying. Do they look like they're sort of inching towards each other? Yes. And crossing? Maybe, maybe not. It's tough to tell. Let's think about the numbers for a second. How can I mathematically prove that A and B and M and N are parallel or that M and N and, and Q and P are perpendicular to each other? Slope? Slope? Yes. Chris? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're saying looking at these spaces right here, whether or not they're equal distances. Okay, you might be able to do that visually, but it's tough to tell on this graph. But yeah, just looking at that and seeing, well, this distance is about the same, and maybe. That's tough. Well, it's like it's kind of there, but not really. Let's think about this mathematically for a second. Uh, I think what Alex mentioned, well, you can use slope to do that. Let me write down some of these details for you. So, uh, slope of A and B. is what, how do I, well, let me write this down. Alright, let's 
do this. Uh, looking at these points, and you can, you can come up and take a closer look, but let's take the next uh, couple minutes, let's say three minutes, and see if you can come up with the slope values for A, B, M, and N, and Q, and P. Yes. Looking at the numbers now, looking at your graph, and if you need to come closer and take a look at what some of the coordinates are, okay, let's do that. Here. That way, we don't have the dead air. Everyone's so recording conscious. It's good. Do I have everything I need to calculate the slope of AB? Yeah. Okay. How do I do that? One more time, Jack. What about M and N? M is negative five and zero, and N is what? was saying it kind of goes choof, sort of a little bit. Does this prove that it goes choof? Yes. Yes? Okay. Two slopes? Two over three, four over five? Are they is that are they the same? Are they equal? Two over three and four over five. Can they be reduced any further? Okay, so these two fractions are different. That means that A and B and M and N are not uh, parallel. And are they, uh, what's it called, more obvious, but are they perpendicular? No. No, okay. 
QP. Uh, let's do QP real quick. What's my point for Q? That looks like negative two and three. Perpendicular. Yes. Prove that. Negative five over four. Okay. Times four over five. Cross it out. are not parallel. Okay, so we look at an example here of being able to read a graph, grab the coordinates out of it, and even though visually we might be able to determine some things, we use slope and our coordinates and our calculations around slope to determine whether or not they are uh, parallel or perpendicular. So that's important. That's a good test question. I think that's going to be other tests. I have no idea what the test is going to be like, but that's a really good question. Because it allows us to read a graph and do uh, some calculations with it. All right, I know that we are going to run short of time on the last two examples. Here's what I'm going to do I'm going to post uh, a little, uh, let's say, two mini clips on. Example three and example four. Probably have those up for uh, tonight, so you guys can take a look at them over the weekend. To wrap things up here, the slopes of parallel lines are. Slopes of perpendicular lines are opposite reciprocal, negative reciprocal, negative. If you feel confident in your answer, feel free to say your name so we catch on video. <laughs> Are negative reciprocals if they have what? Two numbers are negative reciprocals if they have tangents. Two numbers are negative reciprocals if they have blanks, signs. Denominators and numerators are switched around. <laughs> what do you guys think on this side of the room? 
the denominators and numerators are reverse reciprocal and exchange. Right. Switch the round, same thing. For example, blank and 3 over 2 are negative reciprocal. That's my blank here. Right. Negative is from 3. And so are negative 1 over 3. the product of two negative reciprocals is always product of two negative reciprocals is always positive. Which one is that? Product of two negative reciprocals is always yeah. Negative one. I'm a doctor. Here we go. Homework for tonight is 5.5. .5. Again, continue on that if you haven't if you had a chance to work on it last night. Uh, now that we've seen some additional examples, hopefully you'll be able to make your way through that okay. Again, I will be posting. I'll be posting two additional clips. Uh, I want to try and get that done by the end of the day so that i uh, help you guys out with the homework as well. Okay, so I think it's the last two examples. And finally, the test again is on Tuesday, so you're going to want to start the review. Okay? And we're going to be doing some review on Monday on this stuff. And I'll, I'll, I haven't figured out how I want to do the review, at, review yet. I have a lot of people in the second period that are dying for me to play a game, but I also want to make sure that you guys can get your questions answered as well, so we'll see how that goes. Okay. Are there any questions while we're here around what we talked about today? Okay, well we have a couple minutes left, but you guys are about to bring any moment now, I think. It's a little funny today, usually bring Uh, can you start on your homework uh, in these final minutes? Other than that, enjoy the day. It's nice outside. I think it's going to be like this all weekend. 27 on Saturday. 27 on Saturday. <laughs>